Hello everyone. This is the video for the data mining course. And in this section, I would like to discuss about what is the data set. Okay. So in the first uh, video, you will learn about the data type. So we learn about the various types of data attributes. And for this video, we will learn about are the data sets that might be you that might you you might use for your analysis during the data mining course and yeah about the data set um, we can distinguish the data types into several types such as the structured data semi-structured data and unstructured data in the structured data we can say that it is similar with the database. If you already joined the database course, you may find out that the database is a recorded data. Okay, you already learned about the record data. And yeah, we will check again about that issues. <clears throat> and there will be a kind of semi-structured data. So semi-structured data are related with the XML, JSON, email, web pages. Okay. So those kind of data are regarded as the semi-structured data. So basically it is a structure, but the structure might not be in the tabular format. So you need to uh, do some transformation in order to match with the structured data. The last one is about the unstructured data. So in the unstructured data is more, uh, uh, related with audio, video, image data, natural language, documents. Okay? So those kind of data are unstructured. You cannot uh, do with that uh, data immediately for the analysis. So there should be a pre-process or there should be another way to convert those into a uh, structured data so that can fit to the data analysis. Okay. So in the <clears throat> uh, case of the data set, okay, you already learned about the record, uh, graph and network, order and special image and multimedia. So we learned about those stuff uh, in the last video. So yeah, we want to check what kind of data sets that you may use okay, during your data mining class. Important characteristics of data are related to the dimensionality. And so the dimensionality, it means the number of attributes. So you know already the type of attributes. So there are two. What are they? Categorical and continuous. <clears throat> so the, those attributes can be very numerous. Okay. So, for example, yeah, some data can consist of 1,000 attributes. Okay? Some data can consist only five attributes. So, if the attributes are a lot, then yeah, it means we are trying to deal with the high-dimensional data. So, it's very challenging. Okay? So, it's very it's very challenging, and you of course you need to do something with the high-dimensional data. And also sparsity. So sparsity means if the data is like very rare. For example, if you are in the industry, you know that the manufacturing, okay, manufacturing data, you should produce a good product. So it means the defect product or bad product is very rare. Okay, let's say you know zero and one okay so the zero is good product good product good product good product good product good product and there's a bad product and then good product good product good product good product so there are many good products instead of the bad product of course the company wants to have a good product they don't want to get a bad product so we call it, this is the sparsity problem there are many good products but there are many there is a very less bad products and how can you do with this data okay. so that is the sparsity problem the solution okay. 
patterns depend on the scale. You know, in the video, you have very various kind of resolution. So if you are using a high resolution, then you can see the detail. But if the resolution of the video is very small, then the video might be a little bit blur. So you need to handle those kind of issues. The size. So if you have only 10 rows of your data, okay, one, two, until 10. Okay, of course, it will be different if you have one million data rows, okay? So if you have only 10 data, it may give you, it may not give you any, some, uh, any insight. But if you have one million data, of course, it will give you some insights later. And yeah, there will be some other issues if you have big data, then what can you do? So the first is about the record data. So we are really uh, learn about this record data. Okay? If we are dealing with the record data, it means it is a tab tabular data. Okay, so the tabular data it consists of the attributes. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five. There are five attributes, and there are rows. So it means we have ten rows. So we have ten data. Okay, and we can deal with the data matrix. Okay? So what is data matrix? In the data matrix, it means it is the data object, okay? If you still remember, last time we learned about the data object. And the data object have the same fixed set of numeric attributes, okay? They have the fixed set of numeric attributes. It means uh, we have the numeric, like this one, the numeric, numeric. So it's fixed, the number is fixed, okay? And we can say this is the multi-dimensional if you're um already taking the computer programming course you will know about the multi-dimensional array okay so the multi-dimensional array can be referring to the data matrix or the multi-dimensional space so we have the for example two rows okay and there are one two three four five five columns okay so we can just say like 2.5 yeah so we yeah this data set can be represented by m n matrix okay m is referring to the rows and n is referring to the columns okay so for example yeah 2.5 means that there are two rows and five columns and those columns should be fixed so when we have this data matrix yeah you can just use it for your analysis this transaction data is a special type of data where the transaction involves a set of items. So we have the one transaction, we have bread, we have coke, and we have milk. So it is a set of transaction. And yeah, usually we call this is the market basket analysis when you buy book goods in the grocery store. So the the set of products purchased by a customer during one shopping, it constitute a transaction. And the individual products that were purchased, it refers to the item. So this is one item, this is the second item, this is the third item for the one shopping, okay? So this kind of data, it can represent uh, as a record data okay, so you can convert this is uh, kind of data into the record data in the semi-structured data is um, uh, different format and you need to think that uh, some of the semi-structured data contain unstructured format okay? so in the XML or JSON data like email web pages so they consist of some kind of tag okay so we have the tag and whenever we use the tag like this one this is the tag of outer okay so this tag outer it refers to the column yeah outer this tag email yeah it refers to the column email 
Okay. However, when we use the XML format, it it this uh, structure in the format of text. Okay, so this is in the text format, and it's not easy to analyze this data immediately. So we, we need to have uh, the transformation process in order to fit with the data analysis later. So when we are moving toward the tabular format, this one, yeah, it will be easier for you to analyze. So this kind of semi-structured data need a pre-processing, need a transformation process before we do the analysis. Document data, okay. Document data is also one of the uh, data that is challenging. So one document, you know, uh, like Microsoft Word or Hangul pile, one document can contain many words. Okay, so one each document contains many words, and yeah, you can imagine if many documents, then it contains they contain many words. Among the words, there are tokens or terms which are important, and there are also words that are unimportant. Let's say I have three documents, document one, document two, and document three. Okay, just this is for example, okay? So when you have this kind of data, then what is the important word? What is not important word? The data mining using the text mining approach we can analyze the good terms or the important terms and just remove the unimportant terms let's say we have the document okay one two three and then and we found the important terms here are the terms so team they have three times quotes they have zero play they have five and etc so we call this is the attribute, okay? The attribute of the factor. And each of this component means this is the number of times. So there are three times the term appears in the document one. Okay? So we also learned about this stuff in the previous video. And the other kind of data, it might give you some interest, is the graph data is a little bit complicated okay, but it may have some uh, insights if you can generate this kind of graph usually we can use this graph like for the useful link okay? i have this link and then it connect to this website i have this link and it connect to this website I have this link and it connects to this website. So yeah, we can make the connection. So for example, this is the link number one. Okay. So the link, the link or the node number one, okay, and it connect to the node number two. So this is let's say this is node number one, this is node number two, and the node number two connect to the node number three and it connect to the node number four. Okay. so this is the node number three and this is the node number four so let's say node express the page okay node is the web page then you can see that there is a connection between the page number one and page number two and then there is a connection between the page number two and three page number two and four okay and there will be another kind of graph data if you are uh, studying about molecule in the biological stuff yeah, you can also use molecule and you can represent the data into the graph. Um, then the other kind of data, it can be an order data. So if you know about the uh, market basket analysis, okay, in the previous data, we saw the transaction data. Okay? So the transaction data means only one single transaction. So this is one single transaction. But if we want to know many transactions, okay. So let's say this is the transaction on Monday. This is the transaction on Tuesday. And this is the transaction on Wednesday. Then 
I can say that on Monday, there are two items, A and B. On Tuesday, there are one item, which is D. On Wednesday, there are two items, on, which are C and E. Okay. And the element of the sequence is like this one. Maybe yeah, you can say this is the sequence, or sometimes you don't need to deal with the order. So you buy milk and uh, bread, then it does not need to be in order, okay? Because yeah, everything that you bought in one basket, yeah, it can appear in the same invoice. Okay, so the the order it is not a matter, but the items and the number of items could be a matter. So this is the order data. Another type of order data might be about the gen DNA or genomic sequence. So if it is about the DNA, okay, so the DNA is mostly related with the protein. <clears throat> In the protein, we have the component like G, T, C, and A. And it is a sequence of those uh, protein. And you can see maybe this is the first person. The second person, okay. So this is the first, this is the second person, this is the third person, okay. And you know, uh, in the police crime section or in the hospital, they have the way to match the DNA. So if we have the first person DNA or genomic sequence, then we can try to see whether there is a similarity between the first person and the second person okay. and yeah using this kind of data of course it's not a big issue if you want to find your family for example okay. the other kind of data might be related to the spatial temporal data so spatial spatial means map okay. so it's referred to map Temporal, it refers to time. So if you have the map data, spatial data, spatial, just this is the space, space, this is from the space, spatial. And when you want to check the data based on the daily <clears throat> or it's based on the weekly. So for example, uh, <clears throat> we know in Korea, there are many typhoons and we want to check the typhoons hour by hour okay at five o'clock where is the typhoon at six o'clock where is the typhoon at seven o'clock where is the typhoon so we have the temporal data and we want to analyze those data and those data is an order data okay and if you say like um, okay i want to know about the data in terms of the temperature for the monthly temperature for land and ocean so yeah you can just plot and then do the visualization like the picture on the right one <clears throat> in other cases okay, you can have the map data so when you have map data you can change the representation into the vector so map data Okay, map data is something like this spatial spatial data. You have the river and then you have the tree and then you have the house. It can be converted into, for example, raster representation or factor representation. Okay. So how can we convert those data into another representation for analysis? Yeah, there's a way. There is a way to change and to convert those data so that it can be in the form of like for example tabular format or not in the tabular but it is in the matrix format so it is in the fat matrix one and then this is in the term of the coordinate x and y <clears throat> you know audio data okay so the audio data like music or speeds okay? so those kind of data they have signal so the data will be converted into some signal analysis. Okay? So this kind of signal can have some idea. So if you understand about the signal analysis, digital signal process, processing, then you can uh, analyze those. Okay? You can analyze this data 
let's say you have the audio tagging system so you can tag that this is the voice of male this is the voice of female for example this is the voice of male then yeah <clears throat> with some tagging system you can do some classification for example <clears throat> Video data. So video data is also interesting okay, because in a video there might be a lot of insights. For example, now in a video it can be uh, it can be converted into multiple images. So in this video there are three person. Okay. In this three person, <coughs> um, yeah, I need to check um, not only person but maybe yeah in this example. Uh, we have the <coughs> activity okay so the first person so this person is typing okay and what about this person okay. so this person the, the guy who is standing is giving some hint or giving some uh, explanation <coughs> okay the person who is sitting uh, he is yeah i don't know maybe he is also uh giving some explanation okay so they both of them they are giving the explanation and by using those uh videos we can say to someone to other people that yeah this activity is for the person here and this activity is for the person here and the activity is for the person here so we can predict what will they do in the next few minutes for example okay. and there might be other kind of data format like the tensor data so we know the scalar okay. scalar is just a single number and we have the factor data factor is somehow like an array okay so one object will have a one array dimension or we can have like multi-dimension so this is the single dimension array and you have the multi-dimension array so in the multi-dimension array it means yeah sometimes we got just have the two dimensional to say that it is a matrix and there are also another type of data format which is tensor so tensor data is a data structure that will be related to the deep learning <clears throat> so if you understand all those format then uh, it will be easier for you to handle the data analysis and we're going to learn about the factor we're going to learn about the matrix and we're going to learn about the tensor as well so we will discuss about the exploratory data analysis with the basic statistics in the next video okay thank you very much for listening see you on the next video